Welcome to the Modern Day Cottage. I'm Emily Ryder and my daughter is Ruby Ann. Today we're going to share with you a front porch refresh. We're going to clean the concrete and we're going to clean the windows. And we're going to add in some new ferns as well as make some ruffled pillowcases for the rocking chair. So up first, I'm going to make this cleaning solution that I found on Pinterest many, many moons back when you had to ask someone to ask you to Pinterest to even get on Pinterest. I have been a Pinterest user since the very first time Pinterest was available. I will link that Pinterest recipe below if I can find the original, but if I can't find the original, I'll find a recipe that uses everything that I'm doing here. And you can see like it's already starting to dry as you rinse it. It is a wonderful, wonderful cleaning solution that really makes your windows shine and look really, really good. And again, I did use a, a squeegee, like I tried to use a squeegee, but really there was no use to use a squeegee at the end of just spraying it off. So we're putting back in the screens. It is so nice to have clean windows for the springtime, especially you know, when we lift up the windows and the air's coming through, everything is just so clean and fresh smelling. We're also going to freshen up the roses. My husband put in a drip line this winter and it's really made a huge difference in how our roses look. It's a very get-go of the spring and I am so thankful that he is able to do that stuff for us here at our cottage. It's going to be so pretty this summer with those forever roses. So now I'm going to make the ruffle pillows that are going to go in the rocking chairs. I'm using two 22 inch inserts from Amazon. I will put the link below as well. Shop the ruffled pillowcase covers. What I'm doing is I'm cutting it 20 by 20. My pillow inserts are 22 inches. So I want them two inches smaller the fabric that I'm cutting out. So it'll be a very tight fit. That way it won't make a slouchy pillow. It'll be full and fluffy and that's the look I'm going for. Now if that's not the look you're going for, make them at least that size or just one inch smaller. But I wanted a really tight pillowcase cover to hold up in the elements out there. So now I'm cutting the ruffles. So what I did is I cut the front 20 by 20, I cut a back 20 by 20, and I cut the back side into half. And I'll show you later what I'm doing with the back. So now we're doing three and a half inches by 54 inch long. And I'm going to cut three of those. And I'm going to sew these together. Then I'm going to serge them. Then I'm going to iron them flat. And then I'm going to iron the serged part. And I'm going to fold that in on itself again and then again. So that way I can make a very clean hem on the ruffle. Now, if I had more fabric, I would just have made a ruffle with both two sides and just folded it in half. And that would have been a really pretty ruffle as well, but I wanted to conserve as much fabric as possible. And that's why I'm making a seam on the, the wrong side of it. All right, so now I'm ironing down the serge part. It's a quarter of an inch, and then I'm folding over again, which will be another quarter of an inch, a little bit over a quarter of an inch. So that's what I'm doing here. And now I'm making a zigzag ruffle. What I'm doing is I'm doing a zigzag, and what I did is I pulled out a lot of the thread, and then I zigzagged over it, and when you go to pull it, it makes it gathered. So that's what I'm doing here. I do have a ruffle foot, but I find that the ruffle foot makes too big of ruffles and you have to use a lot of fabric to use that ruffle foot. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just basically mimicking what a ruffle foot does by doing that zigzag. It's a little trick I learned. I've surged the edge of that 
and now I'm putting it on the front side of the pillowcase and make sure you pin down the corners of the ruffles because when you go to sandwich it in and sew it you won't catch that ruffle in it and if you catch that little ruffle on the surging part of it 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 may be the end of that pillowcase you may have to start back over again so make sure you really tuck those ruffles in on the corners where they're fluffy so now what I'm doing is I'm cutting a four and a half inch wide piece and then I'm going to cut it into half and I'm going to make this the edge of both of the back pieces so I can put my loop tape which is also called velcro tape and I'm going to do a sew on velcro is what I'm doing so I'm making it 20 inches long and it was four and a half inches wide and then cutting by two and I surged the, the edge of them and I'm turning them in so that way they can have a nice hem as well on the pillow and then I'll sew them to one to each piece what I'm doing now is I'm making the hem on that extra piece that's going to go so then you'll pin on right sides together and then sew this on and then you'll iron it flat and then you'll put your loop tape on the right side of it. And you will do the other piece the same way. And so then when you put these two pieces together, they'll Velcro together. And then you will put them on the back side of the pillow. What I'm doing is I'm surging it after I sewed it on. Now I'm ironing it down to make a nice flat seam. Your iron will be your best friend if you take up sewing. It's probably one of the best tools. Get a really good iron. I love the Rowenta iron. I guess that's how you pronounce it. All right, so I sewed on the Velcro and I sandwiched the two pieces together and that's gonna be the back. And it's okay, you can pull them apart after you've sewed this together. So right sides are facing together and I'm gonna sew the back to the front and make sure that little ruffle doesn't get caught up in that seam. So I'm making sure I'm going around and being very careful and making sure that ruffle is tucked under. So now I'm sewing the edge of all four corners of this pillowcase cover. And slow and steady wins the race here. Make sure you don't sew over a pin, you will break your sewing angle. And be careful of your hands, you know, make sure that you watch all that. All right, so now I'm taking apart the Velcro. I'm gonna turn the pillowcase right side out, and then I'm just inserting the pillow insert into the pillowcase that I just made. And it's gonna be a tight fit, you can see here, but that's what I was aiming for and it just makes a really big fluffy pillow. <laughs> so then you just wanna press down the Velcro and make sure it's closed up good. And these are ready to adore the front porch rocking chairs. I think they look really cute on our front porch and everything is just so clean and sparkly and looks like springtime has arrived here at our cottage. We are absolutely enjoying this beautiful sunshine and all of the flowers that are blooming and all the fragrance. And the birds are coming out. We actually had a bird build a nest in the fern that we just put out there. So that's been really neat. Ruby is gonna make our easy sourdough whole wheat sandwich bread recipe. You can just make it plain or you can add whatever seeds you wanna to add to it. We just added sunflower seeds, poppy seeds, and pumpkin seeds for the added nutrients, and also we like the texture in it. On this blog post, you can find it at themoderndaycottage.com. I give you tips and tricks and step-by-step -step instructions, as well as making this into a bowl. We like making it into a bowl shape when we make our grilled cheese panini sandwiches. You can also find the blog post for the panini sandwich as well at themoderndaycottage.com.
we eat freshly milled flour acts and behaves way differently than your bread flour or your all-purpose flour. It ferments really fast. It also deflates really fast. You can see when I dumped it out of the bowl how quickly it deflated. So it's just going to be a different learning curve when you're using freshly milled flour. I have been milling my own flour since I was 21 and I'm 46. So for 25 years I have been milling my own fresh milled flour. I love making recipes with this. I didn't think a whole lot of people would be into freshly milled flour, but I see that there's a recurrence of this and I love, love, love being able to share my knowledge that I have learned over the past 25 years doing this style of, of bread making. So what I did is I flattened it into a large rectangle and then you fold it into three and then make sure you tuck in the ends. And in this video, I'm making it into two one pound loaf sizes. But in our blog post, it is one two pound loaf to make a large sandwich bread piece. But we like um, smaller bread pieces. That way we're not eating a whole big sandwich. We're eating really technically half a sandwich if we do the one pound loaf sizes. So that's what we, sometimes we like the big pieces and then sometimes, you know, I will make them smaller as well. Now we're going to start making our lacto fermented sauerkraut. This is so simple to make. All you need are two ingredients, salt and cabbage. That is it. So all you need is some simple tools, a cutting board, a knife, a wooden mallet, a mason jar of your choice of size, a mixing bowl, some glass weights for mason jars, and a fermented lid. So what we're doing, we're going to chop it up into coarse pieces. You can grate this in a, in a food processor or a hand grater or a cheese grater. You can do it as finely as you want or as coarse as you want. We like big chunky pieces in our sauerkraut. So we like the firm, crisp, crunchiness of it. If you don't prefer that, use a food grater or a, a handheld grater. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use two tablespoons per head of cabbage, and we're gonna let this sit overnight and covered. The reason why we're letting it sit overnight is because of how coarse we chopped it. Now, if you used a food grater or a cheese grater to grate up to fine, you will not have to do this. This will probably only take maybe four hours of it sitting because the salt will draw out a lot of the water content from your cabbage that's been freshly grated. So you probably will not have to let this set overnight. And it may just take you just a couple of hours to let the brine come out of the cabbage. Any link below that you may click on and make a purchase, we may make a small commission at no cost to you. We only share items and products that we love and use here in our cottage. So you're gonna pack it into a half gallon mason jar or whatever size preference that you prefer ever how much you're making. Make sure there's no air bubbles and then it's all packed in really good. And what I'm doing is I'm adding a tablespoon into this because I'm gonna to have to add in some water because our cabbage did not make a lot of brine 
after sitting overnight. Just depends also on the time of the year the cabbage is grown. Some cabbage has a lot of water content in it and some cabbage does not. It's okay, do not fear. You can add water to this, but just make sure you get all those air bubbles out. And as you add water, just pack, pack that in and just try to get as many air bubbles as possible out. And then after you've packed it in really well and got all those air bubbles out, you're gonna add in a weighted glass weight into there. This, this is specifically made for a wide mouth mason jar. You can also use a cabbage leaf and make sure you tuck it in really well and weight it down with something. I have used in the past like clean rocks, river rocks that I've bought at Dollar General or the Dollar Tree. I don't even know where they came from, but they're just those black river rocks and I put them in a Ziploc baggie and I weighted them down the top. But over the years I have found I have many failed successes trying DIY weights. So I found these weights and these have greatly improved my success with fermenting. I will put the Shop the Amazon link below as well for this recipe. You can find this recipe at themoderndaycottage.com as well. Ruby Ann and I love doing things in the kitchen together and we love sharing things with you guys. We really appreciate your time watching and supporting us and subscribing to our channel, liking our videos and making comments. It really, really, really makes our day. We love it. Ruby Ann is going to be milling up some fresh einkorn. It's actually her specialty, her sourdough einkorn raisin oatmeal cookies. She loves making oatmeal cookies and we have einkorn berries and she dabbled in with making them einkorn and sourdough. You can find this step-by-step -step instructions as well as a recipe card you can print out for these sourdough einkorn raisin oatmeal cookies. They are so simple to make and I promise you they will not last long in your kitchen. We love these cookies. All right, so you're gonna add in half a cup of sourdough starter, as well as some fresh eggs. You want to use room temperature ingredients. That is another tip for these cookies, as well as any baked goods, unless it's noted otherwise. It really helps to use room temperature ingredients. 
and now you're going to add in your einkorn flour that's freshly ground or you can buy all-purpose einkorn flour you will have to alter the recipe a little bit because the all-purpose flour that you buy has already been milled up does not have the wheat brand in it so it's not going to be as thick of a consistency so you may have to add a little bit more flour so know that going forward also these are old-fashioned rolled oats they're not quick cooked oats so they're gonna have a little bit more texture to the cookie if you don't like that extra texture go ahead and add replace the old-fashioned oats with quick oats that's another tip the raisins that we're using are called flame raisins from Azuri standard they are our favorite raisin to date all I know is they are so juicy and so sweet and so good I don't like raisins, like, you know, all that much just eating them, like just out of the bag. But these raisins, I have to hide them because they are so good. You'll use an ice cream scoop or a cookie scoop and you'll want to make at least a two tablespoon ball of dough and then you will bake them in the oven. And you can find that recipe at themoderndaycottage.com. These smell amazing. They are so delicious and caramel tasting. They're so good. Thank you for watching with us today here at the Modern Day Cottage. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to our channel for more content like this. And as always, we will bring you homemade recipes, cottage living, and a cozy home. We hope to see you in the next video.